Okay guys, I want to talk to you guys about any gas engine. I don't care what it's in, whether it's a lawnmower, a motorcycle, a vehicle, car, a truck, anything. Any gas engine, how to get it started. Um, there's a lot of different things that can go wrong from fuses to relays to fusible links to um, spark to fuel injectors, fuel pumps. There's a lot of things that can go wrong with a gas engine, but anytime you're trying to diagnose an engine, let's say for instance you bought the vehicle or it's a friend's vehicle, where do you start? That's what you want to know is where to start to check this engine to try to get it to fire up and run. Whether it runs like crap or not is going to determine on how you fine tune it, whether it's a uh, a carburetor issue, a fuel injection issue, a bad gas issue, a bad spark plug issue, whatever those issues, that's not what this video is about. This video is about how to get it started. No matter what's wrong with it, how to get it started. So start off, there's three things that you have to check. One is air. You have to have air going to the engine. Air would be through the intake. Your intake is on top of the engine that goes into the carburetor or in, into the air duct that goes into the system for newer ones, newer cars, whether it's a motorcycle, whether it's a three-wheeler, whether it's a lawnmower, you know where the air goes in. It goes into the intake. Um, I can get into more detail, but i just kind of trying to sum it up here. So why would you not have air to the engine? The biggest reason is a dirty air filter. Check your air filter, make sure it's not clogged, make sure you blow it out with some air real good or change it. If you have air going to the system, that's the start. The second thing that we're gonna look at is gas going to the system. Whether there's no fuel in the tank, make sure you check the tank and you have fuel in it. That's the first step. This is kind of like checking a fuse before you find an electrical issue. Checking your breaker before you go changing the wiring in your house. The, these steps are first thing you're going to check, second thing you're going to check, etc. So check the tank. Make sure that you have fuel in the tank. The other thing is, if you have fuel in the tank, check the line going to the tank. Make sure there's not a shutoff on it. Make sure that it is, has gas coming out of it. Um, where the line goes into your fuel injection system, your carburetor, or whatever type of vehicle you're using, go as far as you can and disconnect the furthest line, open it up, crank the vehicle, and in some cases, like riding lawnmowers and motorcycles, you don't have to crank the vehicle. And the way you know whether you need to crank the vehicle or not, cranking it means turning the key, by the way, is, is the tank higher than the engine? If the tank is higher, it's gravity fed, you don't have to crank the engine because the fuel will run down the line just like crap runs down downhill. If the fuel tank is lower than the engine, then you'll have a fuel pump. So you may have to crank the engine, especially in newer models, 2003, 4, 5, somewhere there and up. Anything older than that, you shouldn't have to. So check the tank and check the lines from the tank going to the engine. Um, if it's a smaller vehicle like a lawnmower or such, a motorcycle, then you also want to check the bowl at the bottom of the carb. That bowl has a small screw that goes inside of it, in the bottom of it, and just crack it loose and make sure fuel is leaking. A lot of times where that bowl is, let's say this is the bottom of the carb, this is the top of the carb, here's that screw, you just crack it loose. And sometimes you can tap the bowl, especially if it's set all year because uh, gas will, will cause the needle valve to stick and the float won't drop down to allow fuel to go inside there. So tap the side of the bowl if the vehicle's been sitting. And this is on carburetors too. Again, fuel injection, this is not gonna work. So you've checked the bowl and uh, if that float sticks, you can, like I say, tap it, drop it. It'll drop down and allow fuel to come in and then when as it lifts up, it'll shut the needle valve off. So check gas, make sure the vehicle's getting gas. The third and final thing that you want to check is spark. You have to have a spark going to the engine, clearly. What are some of the things that can cause a problem without it, where the engine's not getting spark? Is a bad wire. Check the wire going to the coil. Make sure that you have current, your 12 volts or 6 volts or 24 volts, whatever the system is, 
going to the coil. So you want to make sure you have electricity, I guess you could call it, voltage, just voltage, going to the coil. And uh, if that's good, of course, you want to check fuses and such if you don't have voltage going to that coil, um, if there's no connection at all. So you're going to check that. You're going to check to make sure there's enough voltage. Um, and the way to do that is simply a spark plug. Just pull a spark plug out. Um, I'll do a quick little drawing here. It's not a very good spark plug, but here's the spark plug. These are the threads. This is the element. This is where the wire goes on. You can take the wire off, right? It's over here. Poke a screwdriver in there and just lay the edge of the metal part of the screwdriver up against the, the end of the spark plug, the tip. The spark plug is still in the engine. Or the metal part of the screwdriver can go to any ground on the engine, anywhere where there's metal. And uh, just actually just barely hold it from that or barely hold it from here. And as you crank the engine, you should see a spark going across there. Just don't be touching the metal. Make sure that you're touching the handle of a plastic screwdriver or you're going to get bit. So a small spark should be there. If you don't have a spark there, again, it could be the coil. It could be a bad wire, no voltage. Um, it could be a, a few different things. But as long as you have juice going to the coil, you should have a spark there. Um, if you don't have a spark there, it's probably the coil that's bad or a bad wire going to the coil. But keep in mind, a lot of people misunderstand this, um, especially on older vehicles. The coil has to be excited. If the coil is set for a while, just like we talked about with the fuel, it may not be excited. So you can crank it all you want and you won't get a spark. How do you excite a coil? Well, there's a couple ways. One is to increase the voltage to the coil or two, to set that screwdriver right next to the edge of the spark plug and cause it to spark. A lot of times you, you'll, you can just hold the plug wire up above it and it won't spark, won't spark, won't spark. You barely just touch the screwdriver to it as you're cranking it and then pull it back and then you'll get a spark. And then you can put the plug wire on and it will probably start. That's because you have to excite the coil. If it's not excited, you won't get a spark out of it. Um, two, if the coil is bad, go to the coil. There'll be a plus sign and there'll be a negative sign on the coil. The plus sign is your 12 volts. The negative is obviously your negative. Run a wire directly from your battery, positive and negative, from the positive side to the positive side of the coil. This will bypass the entire electrical system. In the 70s, 80s, and 90s, this is how you stole a car. Run a hot wire from the positive side of the coil to the positive side I'm sorry, positive side of the battery to the positive side of the coil and crank it again and check for a spark. If you don't get a spark at this point, then your ground wire could be bad. Run a ground wire to anywhere on the engine. You can just, it just needs to be grounded. It doesn't matter where, even to the battery. At that point, if you don't get a spark, then you have a bad coil. It's no good. Get another coil. So let's recap. If you have air, fuel and spark I don't care what kind of gas engine it is those three things the vehicle will start and it will run now again it may run like crap because you have bad spark plugs you have bad fuel you have fuel injector issues I don't know those are other questions and you can you have to troubleshoot those separately this video is just to explain to you how to get the vehicle started so you'll get it started up if you have these three things going to the engine. If those are going to the engine, I guarantee you the vehicle will start. No two ways about it, it will start. For any other issues, if you guys have any questions, comments, give me a, a message and uh, I'll try to get back to them as soon as I can and we'll try to work out small details. Um, maybe if fuel pump's bad or something, you need to know how to test it or, or uh, maybe it's not getting any air at all even though you cleaned the filter. We can run that down, but just Try these three, three simple things, and uh, if you got an engine out there, a lawnmower that won't start or something, just check those three things. I promise you, you'll get it fired up. Good luck, and thanks for watching my video. Please subscribe if you like it. Click like if you liked it, and check out all my other videos for, for any other how-to questions. Thanks again for watching.